Hello, it's Chen Games here once again, and welcome to this new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change material parameters in runtime with blueprints. As you can see here, we have this cube actor that is changing its color, and it's happening with timeline in the blueprints. So, yeah, let's get started. So, what we want to do first, I want to find the material that I want to adjust. So I will click this floor and I will find this MI prototype grid gray. So I will click this browse to, it will take me to the folder. And this is material instance, so it has to be material instance so we can adjust it in blueprints. But uh, I will quickly show you, if we right click this and click find parent, we will find it. Uh, parent material, so this one, this is actually the material that you have to create or whatever. But if you have your material like this, you want to create material instance if you don't have one for it already. But we do have this MI prototype grid gray, so let's open it. And here we can see all of our parameters, which are on the material they are these nodes, grid color, uh, top grid color, uh, surface color, top surface color, and so on. And all these grid size, sub grid size, these are, these are all parameters that we can adjust. Okay, so you can see them here. So if we want to change the surface color, we can copy the name, or actually I think, okay, sorry, it copies the uh, color. But yeah, surface color, we have to remember that. So let's leave this open here. Now let's go to the third person map and let's go to whatever folder we want to create the actor. So I will go to the blueprints and here I will create a new blueprint class type actor and I will call this uh, test actor or whatever. Let's open it. Here I will add a cube. I will make it a little bit bigger, so two on all scales. Now it's halfway through the uh, zero mark, so I will set the set location to 100, so half of this size, so it's here, because the one scale is 100 units to all uh, directions, so now it's on the ground, basically you can see. So now let's select our material. So I will select our um, sorry, MI prototype grid gray. Okay, this one, like this. And what we want to do next is let's first compile and save. Let's go to our construction script. And here on the construction script, what we want to do, we want to get our cube or whatever, where you have the material. Then you want to get from the cube and you want to first get material like this. And then you want to select the index that you want to use. We only have one, so it's element zero, element index zero here. Now we want to get again from the uh, cube. And here we want to create dynamic material instance, like this. And it actually created a new one, a new reference, so let's actually delete that. Let's connect to here, like that. And now the element index will be the zero, and we want to connect this to the source material. And optional name, we don't have to put anything here, but we can also, if we want, we can put the surface color. And if you want to copy this, you can go to here and you can find the parameter and you can copy the name from here, like that. Or you can just write it, but yeah. Uh, so we can copy it here, but it actually doesn't matter. Now we can, or we have to create a new variable from this. And let's call this dynamic material instance. 
but you can call it whatever you want. And now let's go to the event graph. Let's delete everything else than the begin play. And let's leave some space here. Let's create a new custom event. Let's call this change color. And now from the begin play, we can just call the change color. So when the game starts, it will call this function or event. Now let's right click and let's create a timeline. And let's play from start like this. Let's rename the timeline to be like change color uh, TL, which stands for timeline. Let's open it. I will change the length to like four seconds. It doesn't matter. It can be whatever. And I will create a new flow track. And here to the zero, I will add a key like that. And to the middle, so half of the four, so time two and value one like that. Now to the end, so time four and value zero. So it's like this. Now I want to click on all of these and right click and set the key interpolation to auto like this. And this and this you actually don't have to do, but you can do it if you want. So it smooths the curve out like this. So compile, save, and let's go back to the event graph. Now what we can do here is we can get the dynamic uh, material instance to here. And from here we can set vector parameter value or whatever parameter you want to adjust. It can also be like uh, set scalar parameter value, which is, uh, for example, this one, these green ones, you can see scalar parameter. So we will set the vector parameter value from the update like this. And now the parameter value, we want to paste the surface color or whatever you are changing. And now from the value, let's get a lerp linear color node like this. And let's connect the new track zero to the alpha. Okay. And if we want to get the original color from the from this parameter, we can just go here and find it. And uh, sorry, this one. Uh, open it and copy it from from any one of these. It doesn't matter. Let's get the top one. Now let's go to the test actor. Let's open the A, let's paste the top one, like that. Now it has the uh, original color. And the B, we can set it to like red, like that, or whatever color. Now it only plays this one time. So on the finished, we can call this change color again. So it will play this when the, it finished. Uh, when it ends, it will play it again, like that. Okay, compile, save, and now if we go to the level and we put the test actor to here, I will actually put it exactly to the right position. Now, when we play, I will play a new editor window. You can see it is changing the color. And you can obviously change whatever parameters, like if you want, you can also change the grid size, for example. So let's copy this name. And you can just like get dynamic material instance like this. And from here, you can just set a scalar parameter value. Paste the parameter name and set the value to like 50 if you want. Compile, save. Now it will be set to 50 when the game starts. And you can obviously do the same thing here on the change color function with the timeline. So you can put this here and use lerp and so on, it will change when this timeline plays. But yeah, I actually think that was all for this video. If you like what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. 
And yeah, hope you have a great day and see you in the next one.